Hi, I'm Kim Shields. Plein air is one of my passions. I would like to invite you to come along with me and explore the joy of plein air painting. In the process, we will talk about the whys and whats of plein air, the supplies, and finish with a few do's and don'ts. So, let's go. I'm asked, what is plein air? It is a French term, which means outside. Now as to why plein air, each artist will find their own reasons. But one of the most common is simply, it's the joy of being outside and connecting with nature. Personally, I find the need to make quick decisions about elements such as composition and color when painting plein air force me to not to overthink it. Get me in the studio and I will overwork it every time, but not with plein air. There's a freshness that studio work cannot recreate, and the colors. Nature gives you color combinations that are unavailable anywhere else. So, let's talk about supplies. What do you need? Remembering that it's always best to travel light. The essentials are your paint, your brushes, a surface that you choose to paint on, pencil and eraser, an easel, paper towels, and water, both for painting and drinking. Things that will make your life easier, but might add a little extra weight to your pack. Something to carry it all around in. A hat, sunglasses, bug spray, umbrella, perhaps a sketchbook for compositional sketches, trash bags. And remember, when you paint, you are probably on someone's property. If necessary, ask for permission. And when you leave, clean up so that you can be welcomed back again. This partial list will be included in an addendum at the end of this video for your convenience. Part of the joy of being an artist is the discovering of what works for you. Just as each artist finds their own subject matter, so do we discover what supplies works for you. So, these are only a few suggestions to consider. For my personal setup, I use a metal field easel with my usual 140 pound cold pressed paper. My other supplies are in this handy toolbox. It consists of two boxes. It is on wheels with two different handles. One for carrying and the other with an extendable handle if I use the wheels. This is how it looks when I finish setting up. The paint box, which is an old tackle box, remains in storage unless needed. My palette is small enough to hold in my hand if I choose and has large wells for those big washes. In addition to my water container, I have paper towels, a mechanical pencil, and kneaded eraser, and a small squirt bottle. Though not in this picture, I also carry a trash bag. Now for the brushes. Despite the large number you see, I generally only use about three on a painting. My go-to is a large quill for those large washes at the initial lay-in, a round, and either a rigger or dagger. The rest are only used as needed or for special effects. Now for the do's. Step one. What is the best time to paint? When you feel like it. Though early morning or late evenings are the usual choices. Keep in mind, your time of day will affect your light source. Take a mental snapshot or take a camera picture noting which direction the light is coming from. Don't chase the changes in the light from what attracted you to the subject in the first place. Step two, choosing your subject matter, what to paint. Paint what interests you, whether it be a subject matter 
such as landscape, cityscape, or perhaps it is just looking for the certain light. This is one of the most difficult steps. Remember, just because a scene is beautiful or interesting does not mean it will make a good painting. Step 3. The Plan Keep it simple and learn to see the composition in terms of its basic shapes. Sometimes nature will give you that perfect picture, but more often, good composition is not an accident. It must be extracted from the larger scene before us. One way to simplify is by looking for the form's basic masses and shapes. Learn how to compose with a limited focus and how to find the essential clues necessary to build that illusion of depth within your paintings. Take your time. In plein air painting, there is a popular belief that one should work quickly. The plein air painter has to build up to this kind of speed over time. As you get better, you can move through the steps more quickly, but at first, take it slow. Consider a limited palette. Getting colors to work well together can be a complicated endeavor. A limited palette can help. Use a small set of pigments, usually one of each of the primaries. And then maybe add an additional pigment or two. Fewer pigments lead to colors and mixtures that are more interrelated and will work together. Your palette will vary depending upon your subject you choose. Some artists consider the painting complete the moment they pack up their gear. Others will finish their work in the studio with their studies and photo references. There is no wrong way. Now for the don'ts. Mistakes will be made, no doubt about it. Here are some common mistakes you can try and avoid during your first few plein air experiences. The number one reason, not having a clear plan before you start. A plein air outing won't be successful unless you have a clear idea of what you want to accomplish. Number two, using small brushes at the start. Work large to small, both in scope and in the choice of your brushes. Number three, focusing on one area too long instead of seeing the entire design. You're still using that small brush, aren't you? Number four, continuing to go back over what you've already painted when your painting might just be better than you think it is. Number five, giving up too quickly. Number six, failing to mix up enough paint and skimping on how much paint you put down. Watercolor dries much lighter than what you put down. Number seven, painting too large a canvas in the amount of time that will be available before the light changes. Light is very important when it comes to plan air. The sun is your clock. If you're trying to fill up a canvas that's too large and the light is moving quickly, you will run out of time. It might take more than one outing. Number eight, being too impatient between washes. Let it dry. Number nine, getting bogged down in detail too early instead of amassing in the basic shapes. Feeling overwhelmed by the small stuff? Try squinting to eliminate the details and you can see the values more clearly. Number 10, forgetting to squint to eliminate the details and to see the values more clearly. Think of the bigger picture. Avoid the tiny details when you first start. In my closing remarks, I'd like to leave you with these thoughts. If the fear of being watched is stopping you, no matter how bad you think your painting is, it will still be better than what the general public can do. Go join a plein air group. You will find that the passion of like-minded people is incredible and will also add to your safety. 
And finally, if you are ever planning to be in Inverness, let me know you're coming and maybe we can go paint together. Thank you.